the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. As we gather on another Wednesday in Lent to strengthen our faith and celebrate our faith and share our faith as we journey to explore the idea of thy will, not mine, be done. I'd like to thank all of those who are here this evening for attending and also all of those who are making the service possible. Our musicians, of which you have many great ones in this church, <laughs> which I'm impressed with, acolytes, our ushers, the tech desk people, just all of you, thank you for your contributions. Let us begin this Lent gathering by taking a moment to clear our space, to be present for our worship. If you are comfortable, feel free to close your eyes or just gaze gently downward. And then notice your breath. Become aware of the movement of your breath in and out of your body. I invite you to feel the physical sensation of the breath. Don't judge it or try to change it. Don't control it. Don't think about it, but rather experience it. And isn't it wonderful when people of faith come together and feel together the breath of God? I invite you next to let go of the busyness of your day, all of the doing, the rushing around, the conversations, the interactions. Just see if you can imagine exhaling that out your breath and then just setting it aside for now, knowing you can return to anything important later. But now you clear a space for you to be present to God's word, to the music, and the presence of Christ this evening. And now, if you will join me responsively in your bulletin. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. Stay with us now, for it is evening. Let your light scatter the darkness.
May God be with you all. And also with you. Let us sing our thanks to God. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright. For your word and your presence are the light of our pathways, and you are the light and life of all creation. Come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. The first scripture reading is from Genesis chapter 32. The same night, Jacob arose and took his two wives and his two maids and his eleven children, and he crossed the ford of the Jabbok. And he took them, and he sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. And Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. And when the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched the hollow of his thigh And Jacob's thigh was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. And then he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, what is your name? And Jacob answered, Jacob. Then he said, your name shall no more be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. The second reading is from Acts chapter 9. Saul kept on threatening to kill the Lord's followers. He even went to the high priest 
and asked for letters to the leaders of the synagogues in Damascus. He did this because he wanted to arrest and take to Jerusalem any man or woman who had accepted the Lord's way. When Saul had almost reached Damascus, a bright light from heaven suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground, and he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you so cruel to me? Who are you, asked Saul. (laughs) I am Jesus, the Lord answered. I am the one you are so cruel to. Now get up and go into the city where you will be told what to do. The men with Saul stood there speechless. They had heard the voice, but they had not seen anyone. Saul got up from the ground, and when he opened his eyes, he could not see a thing. Someone then led him by the hand to Damascus, and for three days he was blind and did not eat or drink. Yeah, blind. The gospel reading is from the book of John, chapter 14. I'm reading from the message translation, which is just a modern language translation, wherein we hear Philip say, Master, show us the Father, and then we will be content. You have been with me all this time, Philip, and you still don't understand? To see me is to see the Father, so how can you ask, where is the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? And the words that I speak to you are not mere words. I don't just make them up on my own. The Father who resides in me crafts each word into a divine act. Believe me. I am in my Father, and my Father is in me. Now, if you can't believe that, believe what you see, the works, these works. The person who trusts me will not only do what I'm doing, but even greater things, because I, on my way to the Father, am giving you the same work to do that I've been doing. You can count on it. From now on, whatever you request along the lines of who I am and what I am doing, I'll do it. That's how the Father will be seen for who he is in the Son. I mean it. Whatever you request in this way, I'll do. After spending all night wrestling with an angel, Jacob demanded a blessing. And the blessing he received was this. Your name shall no more be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with men, and you have prevailed. Striving with God. It can sound not quite right, because striving means to expend great Exertion against great difficulty. So the name Israel means one who strives with God, struggles with God, endeavors, attempts with God. But the key word to pay attention to here in all of these strenuous expressions of strive is the word with. Israel does not mean to strive against God, but rather to strive with God. Jacob, one of our great ancestors of our Christian heritage, received a name which then the entire faith community adopted as their name and identity. Those who contend with God, who grapple with, who argue with, who take on, who fight, who wrestle with God. Yeah. It's almost bad as going blind, isn't it? (laughs) Would we prefer a nicer, more comfortable, 
less disconcerting name. When we make a commitment in whatever form, be it baptism, confirmation, church membership, prayer, reading the Bible, whatever, we agree to the faith heritage of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Which means we strive with God and others. <laughs> that is, we agree to be actively engaged, deliberately prayerful, consciously let go. We sort of hammer it out, so to speak, with God. And the idea can be seemingly contradictory that God's will works with wrestling, (laughs) with decisiveness, with struggle, that maybe God's will is more easily known through resolve or determination, which may be the opposite of what we think when we hear the expression God willing, which can often mean to us that we are to be passive, wait, accept what is, don't rock the boat, expect God to take care of the whole thing, don't speak up, don't upset others. But what was Saul doing when he was knocked down on the road to Damascus? He was going down the road, papers in his hand, ready to do away with those Christians who he was convinced were wrong and a menace to society. Saul was all in when he was struck by a bolt of lightning telling him to stop the persecution. And then he was given detailed instructions of where to go and what to do. Paul wasn't sitting around wondering, I don't know, what's going to happen with all these new Christians? What do you think we should do? I don't know. Gosh. How should, I don't, how should we handle it? Well, I don't, I don't want to upset anybody about this. No. He was going down the road, papers in hand. I am going to take care of this problem. And then you know what? He was really dramatically corrected. (laughs) He had the wrestle, but he had the wrong wrestle, right? (laughs) So we have to ask, is a a form of sabotage to be aware of in understanding or doing God's will Inactivity, passivity, resignation, indifference. God's will is rarely known by doing nothing. And yet not taking action is the action that many people take as they wait for God to do it. To provide motivation, to provide decisions, to remove all risks. But consider what the word will means. Mm -hmm. Will is volition, desire, a strong longing. It's something we really, really want, right? It's a purpose. It's an intention. It's a determination. You know the expression, where there is a will, there is a... You got it, right? Will is energy. It is enthusiasm. We might say of someone that they work with a will. Or you may know a person with a difficult health challenge, and yet they continue to live. Why, we say? Because of their strong will to live. Mm -hmm. Will is the power of conscious and deliberate choice and action. Will is a strong quality wherein we act consciously and clearly. We are striving. We are fighting vigorously. We are wrestling like our faith ancestor Jacob. (laughs) 
But for what? (laughs) Our way? To be right? Our agenda? To overpower the person that we think is an idiot? (laughs) All right? Ah, (laughs) remember, active but not in control. Always ready to be corrected at any time. I frequently tell God, if I've got it right, make me stronger, let it get better. If I'm wrong, correct me. (laughs) Pull me off, tell me, let me know. Because I could very well be wrong. And I pray that if I don't have it right, let me know. Striving is a part of our faith journey. And there is no reason to make it wrong. And there is no reason to think there's something wrong with us when we wrestle with life, with God, or others. But in our striving, we allow Christ to guide us, to help us, to whisper answers in our ear. Our God is a personal God who is with us. This Sunday is St. Patrick's Day, A, when we honor the courageous work that Patrick did to bring the Christian message to Ireland. And my, how he strove with God and others to get that done. Mm -hmm. St. Patrick's breastplate had one of his prayers on it, which became known in Ireland as a hymn entitled, The Deer's Cry. And here is how the hymn got its name. The pagan king of Tara, King Lari, was planning to kill Patrick. And so he devised this plot. The king begged Patrick to come to Tara so that he, the king, could profess faith in Patrick's God. And then the king set up an ambush on the way to Tara with his men lying in wait to kill Patrick. God revealed the king's evil intentions to Patrick. So, knowing the king's intentions, Patrick prayed for himself and his nine companions that were traveling with him, which included a servant boy attending them who carried some written Christian tablets on his back. Patrick prayed this prayer of protection for them before they set out on their journey. And here is what St. Patrick prayed. I arise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through a belief in the threeness, through confession of the oneness of the creator of creation. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right and Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in the eye that sees me, and Christ in the ear that hears me. When Patrick and his group came to the place where the soldiers were hiding, waiting, lying in ambush, the soldiers saw nothing. They saw nothing but eight deer going past them into the wild, and behind the eight deer a fawn with a bundle on its shoulders. Hmm? Now, I don't know about you, 
But I strive to have that kind of thy will be done in my life. Amen. The light shines in the darkness. In peace, we pray to you. God of mercy, hold us in love. For peace and salvation, we pray to you. God of mercy, hold us in love. For peace between nations, for peace between people. God of mercy, hold us in love. For us who are gathered to worship and praise you. God of mercy, hold us in love. For all of your servants who live out your gospel. For all those who govern, that justice might guide them. God of mercy, hold us in love. For all those who labor in service to others. God of mercy, hold us in love. Grant weather that nourishes all of creation. God of mercy, hold us in love. Keep watch on our loved ones and keep us from danger. God of mercy, hold us in love. For all the beloved who rest in your mercy. God of mercy, hold us in love. 
Help us, comfort us all of our days. Keep us, hold us, gracious God. Gracious and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God create her bless us and keep Go in joy and go in love. Amen.